But could you summarize why you're sitting here and why you want to tell the world that you had demons cast out of you and things changed? Um, I, I have a love for Jesus that um, far extends anything that I've ever, you know, I mean, he, he is my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people free. I want people to have that freedom. You know, if you're out there and you're struggling with um, sexuality and, you know, same-sex attraction and everything, just know that you don't have to stay in that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay in that. And Jesus is there to help you. And he will love you through it. It may be a process like it has been for the eight years for me. Yeah. It may just be overnight. But God loves you enough to to want you to be free from that. God, take this same-sex attraction away from me or let me die, you said. Yeah, I actually tried to commit suicide one time. Oh. And because of that, I didn't realize that, that it was a demon. Okay. I didn't realize and that, that God and, could heal you from that. Yes, and, and that God free could you? free me from that. I didn't realize that, you know, I, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I'm like, and my mom would say, well, all you have to do is pray. You know, you can pray it away. And I'm like, no, no, I've asked God. You know, I would ask for years, I asked God, take it away from me. Mm -hmm. And he never did. Yeah. And and I was willing. So, Pam, you had several things that blow my mind. You had a same-sex attraction that was unwanted. Mm -hmm. You had mental illness. You had mm -hmm. self-harm. And what, how did you get free of all these things? I was at a church service. And um, I was, I went down to the front to get some uh, prayer and everything. How long ago was this? Uh, about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went down and I got prayed over. And at that time, I only heard about deliverance at the altar. I'd never heard that you could have a session and, mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I prayed and I said, Lord, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm good with being single for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so um, I felt like it was taken away at that mm -hmm. time. Now, the same sex attraction? I do. Wow. I do. No, but it was a process for yeah. me. It just didn't happen mm -hmm. like overnight. But something about that prayer at that altar? Some, yes, changed something, something about that what, person. What do you think it changed? I felt something leave me. Oh. I really felt like for the first time in my whole life that, that, something left me so, and that I was, it was brought with peace mm -hmm. and everything like that. And so and you didn't want the same sex attraction. So then after that experience that God touched you, was it easier to not oh, have it that was, attraction or you just didn't have it? Or that, it was easier. You said it was a process. It was a process for me. And I really had to renew my mind. Okay. I had to like do scripture. I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, for I know the plans that God has for you not to harm you. Since I've been here, I have learned about the Father's love. Yes. And how much he loves me. In the LGBTQ community, there are people there that uh, don't want the same sex attraction. And that that yes. is something that you can speak to. So what would you tell people about I that? would say that if if you're out there and you do not want um, a same-sex attraction, find a deliverance um, place that will um, have this deliverance. Um, and why deliverance? Like I said, I felt like something left me. I've talked to other people um, in in this community here in the at the well, I think there's like seven or eight of us that yeah, at least yeah, yeah. Um, that we know of that has said you know I really believe that once I had the deliverance that it left me and mm -hmm. I there are some people that said it it just immediately went away and then some people said it was a process and so mm -hmm. but I really believe that there's there's a demon that that makes people. Mm -hmm. Um, have same 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 sex attraction, and also it could be generational. Mm -hmm. You know, I really believe I start having memories from some abuse that happened, mm -hmm. some sexual abuse that happened in my background. And when you were a little girl, yes, oh. my ex husband um, mm -hmm. abused me and mm -hmm. uh, raped me, and so mm -hmm. I had had that pattern of you know abuse. I got divorced. I, I got into, started getting into relationships 
um, and everything, but they were never with like, women. yes, with women. Um, and I never like, I was happy, but I was never really satisfied. I would pray and ask God to take take it away from me. Mm. Um, I would pray at night. I would be like, okay, God, I, I really don't want this. The I same really, sex attraction. Yes, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't feel right. I don't feel comfortable. But then he would never take it away from me. Now, did you not feel comfortable just because of your parents' expectations and societal expectations? Or why did you not want I don't, that same-sex attraction? I don't think attraction? it was... I don't think it was resonating with my spirit. I was a Christian. The Bible says, you know, we should not do that. Mm -hmm. And so I really believed that it was, but then it, uh, the church was affirming it. And so oh, that church you went to, yeah, yeah the yeah. church was affirming it. Was that it, healing so. for you or was that, did that, um, it was very confusing. Your love for the LGBT community and people at our church that come here is very healing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so yes. what's the difference between, between the people at that church and it got you confused compared to I see you and other people here really loving on LGBTQ. Um, it's not that I didn't love, I mean, like I was a part of it. Okay. But I'm talking about the struggle that was in me. I see. Okay. Yeah. And the struggle that was in me was that I didn't feel like it was right, but I didn't know how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And like I said, I prayed and I asked God to, take it away from me please god and, and sometimes i said god if you can't take this away just bring me up to you because i i don't want to be oh, like this. it was so like, painful you wanted to die i at did times. Okay. yeah at times i wanted to die that joy that that is talked about in the bible and that you see on people's faces around here in it's the like well. happiness combined with peace yes and, yeah. yes i never was like that i started plugging myself into not gay affirming churches and then i came here and so uh, it was about two and a half years ago that i started having feelings for men again oh you started and having yeah wow. yeah and um so is that something that you wanted yeah i did yeah. I, I mean and i really believe that that i'm not a person that is going to be single for the rest of my life because okay. i really believe that god has given me that love for companionship mm -hmm. and so and even love. when you were married though when you were married you didn't have that mm -mm. Oh. no i didn't yeah. to a man uh, you were married to a man i should say yeah and you yeah. didn't have that yeah. yeah so god has really done Restored. something special and beautiful yeah redeemed wow. yes yeah. So there are a lot of Christians watching this channel, Pam. What would you say to them about how to love people who have same-sex attraction? I will not go and I will not hold the sign up that says, you are an abomination. Yeah. You, Because if people had come at me like in the last, you know, eight years with yeah. that, I would have like completely gone away. Mm -hmm. I would have not yeah. come back to Jesus. I would say just love, you know, um, just... Um, even if if they do not come out of it, mm -hmm. still love. It, I mean, Jesus showed love. Yes. You know, everywhere he went, you know, casting out demons, he showed love. He didn't say, okay, you got to do this, this, and this, So, and then I'm going to heal you. He loved them. He just loved yeah. them, and he healed them. Yeah. And then he said, you know, go sin no more, but we don't even know if they did or not. But he yeah. still healed them. Yeah, right. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, everyone's experience is different, but what is your experience with being sexually abused as a child and how that influenced your sexuality? I think I think it did um, affect me because I didn't want to have anything to do with men. Oh. Nothing. Even though, even when I was married to, to my husband, I just really did not want to be married. And so, yes, I believe that. Um, do you think that's the case for most people, Pam? I, or do you think different people have different experiences? I actually did a study on it you did. when I was in, in your, school. Okay. Yeah. And um, you're the one to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's, I think, I, between 80 and 85% of the LGBTQ community has been sexually abused. Most of them, if you'll talk to them, they've had some kind of abuse in their past. So Pam, when you were a little girl, you were seriously hurt in many ways as a, as a um, wife. And how did that influence your, your mental health? Because you said you struggled with bipolar disorder yes. and, and self-harm, suicidality. W what other things did you struggle with? And then 
Why do you want to talk about that in relation to deliverance? Because I know that's important to yes. you. Yes. When I was 30, I was diagnosed with um, bipolar disorder. Um, I must have went on, I don't know, eight or nine different medications. Was that after the marriage? Is yes. Abuse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with um, ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I think that might have been a misdiagnosis because yeah. I remember trauma. the highs and lows. Yeah, um, trauma can look like that. Yes. Yeah. And um, I remember the highs and lows when I was um, younger, but my mom took me off the medication because it was only Ritalin at that time. Yeah. And so it made me sleepy all the time. And so okay. she just took me off of it. Um, and you got freedom from a lot of these things in your 30s or 40s or more recently when you went through deliverance? Yeah, when wow. um, I've struggled with, I struggled with the bipolar all my life, I feel like. And, yeah. um, and you took medication for how, took, how long to treat that? From 30 to 58, oh. 58, yes. Um, Almost three decades. Yes. And and you don't have to take medication anymore? No. Um, I finally got on the right medication. Um, I was, like, my moods were stabilized and everything. I mean, I would have some lows and some highs. But when I had my deliverance, and it was on um, February the 8th, um, and um, I came here and... Um, I renounce things and shut doors and everything like that. And then when, um, at the end, when they do the um, confronting, um, I had... Um, and they're not confronting you. They're confronting right. evil <laughs> they're, spirits. Yeah, they're not... Demons. Yeah, because yeah. I went away. I was just like... Oh, you weren't totally conscious. I wasn't conscious yeah. about... Um, they told me a lot. Yeah. And um, so... Um, Filled you in on what happened. Yeah. yeah. And so... Um, I uh, was um, freed of two demons, mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe the first one was Jezebel, and it's a um, sexual spirit. Yes, and then um, I um, believe the second was Lucifer, mm -hmm. and um, so I was like, uh, I finished so, the session, mm -hmm. okay, and I have like chatter in my head all the time. I had chatter yeah. in my head all the time. It was like. Blah, 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 you know, it's just how your normal was? That was it, you know, and when I finished the session and we had gotten those demons out and everything, I had no chatter. There oh, was silence. <laughs> there was silence, and I had never heard yeah. that before, and I was, like, going home going, oh, my gosh. I could hear, like, the cars going by. I could hear, you know, and then when I was at home, it, it seemed like everything was, like, heightened. Mm. Um and it then, took some time to get used to. Yeah, it yeah. did. But it was a good it thing. It was a good thing. It was really good. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, and then did you start talking to your doctor and come off medication? Because we have to be careful. We don't want people to quit their medication. I do not. Without that. consulting with a medical professional <laughs> right. here. Um, I um, went home. I like prayed and everything. And I really felt the Lord say, you need to stop your medication. Oh. And that was three days later. And um, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> you want to test it out <laughs> Right. <first? laughs> but I did. I stopped my medication. Um, and um, I haven't taken any medication since. Wow. And I, I consulted with um, my therapist, mm -hmm. my sponsor. Um, and then I talked to a couple of people here mm -hmm. at um, the well. And um, I didn't do it, like, by myself or anything like that. Yeah, I was I mean, making sure that I had, you know... Uh, support and you know um, telling them okay like I did this so if I'm like I think crazy just tell me you know yeah. but I didn't I mean I don't have any highs or lows anymore I mean Wonderful. yeah I get I get upset but I mean mm -hmm. it's not because of the bipolar it's just because that you know I'm human so when you were struggling and wanted that same-sex attraction gone wanted the bipolar gone did you know that God loved you in the way you know now that the father loved you I knew that he loved me yeah um, but I didn't have a realization, an experience, of an experience. Yes. Um, yeah. I did when I was saved, mm -hmm. uh, when I was accepted Jesus mm -hmm. as my, you know, personal savior. And, um, but that just kind of like went away mm -hmm. and, um, it's kind of like, I just forgot and I got involved in all the other stuff and mm -hmm. and I also want to know I want people to know that you can be saved mm -hmm. and you can you can do other things yeah. 
you know, like I did. I, I God never left me. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. God never during that whole. I think it was a couple decades that I was. Yeah, you know, I think it was. Did you turn your back years. on God even when He didn't leave you? I don't. I don't think I ever turned my back on God. Oh, good. You know, yeah. um, I, I did some things that weren't good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it, but. I don't think I ever turned my back on God because I kept seeking mm. the the places that was going to accept me. You think if you had totally turned your back on him that he'd still accept you? Yes. Yeah. I still I yeah. still do. Yeah. I still think that he he was pursuing me. Yeah. And yeah. he was yeah. like, you know, he never left me. He says, "Pam, you can always come back." Yeah. And, you know, um and finally you know when I had that realization at the altar that, you know, I don't I don't have to live this lifestyle and I don't want to live it anymore. That was it. And so, and that, I felt like a demon left me and mm -hmm. my life was changed. And I, I knew about that love, but I've been going to the school mm -hmm. um, of supernatural ministry and that, here had, well. yeah, here at the well. And that has, that has really changed my life. And it yeah. feels, I feel like the sermons, mm -hmm. Um, have gone along with the school yeah. and so I've been getting the sermons on Sunday and then going to school oh. and then getting a double yeah. um, about the father's love and um, what, what's the last thing that you would say to the LGBTQ community to Christians um, that need to know how to love the LGBT community to people in mental health just what are a couple more okay bites um, of wisdom because you have a lot of it <laughs> The one thing that I, that I can say is that God God loves us. Um, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And if, you know, people are um, there and, you know, if, if you're praying and asking God to take it away, um, he will. And um, I can tell people. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep don't, pursuing yes, him and keep he'll keep pursuing you. Yes. And also to... Christ, other Christians out there just don't don't have a judgmental condemnation yeah. um, attitude towards the LGBT community because I am proof yeah. that it can change that I can change you can change you know um, and that God loves you no matter what whether you change or not He still loves you. Pam? One of the reasons why I started this channel, and I don't know if you know this yet, but is because of your story. And I thought there are people at our church and in our community that have stories that are powerful that need to be told. And I was excited to meet with you. Pam was a, a is a retired social worker, mm -hmm. and her story is powerful, and she is ready to tell the world. And you were writing a book about it. Yes. <laughs> we will be looking forward to reading your book in the future about all this, too. Yes. Yeah. And Pam, yeah. I love you. Love you thank too. you so much for meeting with me and thank you for being my sister here at the well it's a beautiful place to be and you're a huge part of it oh thank you thank you i'm glad to, i'm glad to be here that this has changed my life yeah. i mean this whole experience and mm -hmm. deliverance and everything has changed my life